Today on The Daily Dose, the assassination of John F. Kennedy. With election season fast approaching, on November 22, 1963, First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy joined her husband on a 10-mile motorcade through Dallas, Texas, in a convertible Lincoln Continental limousine, waving to an enthusiastic crowd that lined the parade route. Along for the ride sat Texas Governor John Connolly and his wife Nellie, when at 12.30 in the afternoon, as their limo passed the Texas School Book Depository building, three shots rang out from a six-floor window, ending the life of the 35th President of the United States and seriously wounding Governor Connolly. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital in uh, Dallas, but we do not know uh, to where he has proceeded. A flash from Dallas. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he is dead of bullet wounds. This is the latest information we have from Dallas. I will repeat with the greatest regret, two priests who were with President Kennedy say he has died of bullet wounds. John F. Kennedy died at approximately one o'clock Central Standard Time today here in Dallas. For those Americans alive at the time, the tragic murder of the Commander-in-Chief gutted a nation to its core. Passing away at Parkland Hospital at the still young age of 46, at 2.39 that same afternoon, Vice President Lyndon Baines Johnson took the presidential oath aboard Air Force One as it sat on the runway at Dallas Love Field, in front of 30 eyewitnesses, including Jackie Kennedy, who still wore clothes stained with her dead husband's blood. Seven minutes later, Air Force One departed Dallas for its return flight to Washington, carrying with it the slain president's body. Less than an hour after JFK's murder, 24-year-old Lee Harvey Oswald took the life of Dallas police officer J.D. Tibbet, who had stopped Oswald near the suspect's Dallas rooming house. Two days later, while Oswald was being moved from Dallas police headquarters to a more secure location, the suspected assassin was himself slain by strip club owner Jack Ruby, which in turn laid the groundwork for years of speculation and conspiracy theories regarding who ordered the president's assassination. On November 25, 1963, a nation came together to mourn the loss of a dynamic American icon as Kennedy's horse-drawn caisson traveled from the U.S. Capitol to a requiem mass at St. Matthew's Cathedral, before leaders from 92 countries followed his caisson to Arlington National Cemetery, where he was buried with full military honors on a slope below Arlington House. At the request of his widow, Jacqueline lit an eternal flame, which still burns to this day in honor of the fallen president, making the assassination of John F. Kennedy a prescient foreshadowing of a nation's violent years to come. And there you have it, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, today on The Daily Dose. If you like learning something new every day, subscribe to The Daily Dose on YouTube or sign up for emails at dailydosenow.com.